I'm going to show you how to make the shooting board. I've got my uh, procedure here. I've got my materials ready to go. So I've got the base. I've got a piece of plywood here. I want something that's stable. So I'm going to use uh, half inch Baltic birch for the support. Also want something that's stable because these are going to be attached together and the first one of these I made, I did use solid wood, and as it expanded, contracted, it warped the shooting board since uh, it was attached to a, a stable piece. So I've got another piece of plywood for this. I've got the uh, guide strip, which is going to be glued to here. That's going to allow the plane to ride on a piece of hardwood as opposed to the plywood. I've got a runner that's going to be glued to here. That's what the plane is going to ride on. And then I've got the material for the fence. I also have some cleat material and of course I've got some screws. I'm going to start by gluing this strip onto the edge of this piece of plywood. So I'm using a roller to get the glue nice and even on here. And I'm working on a flat surface here so that I get even pressure on the underside of my glue up. So I've got a uh, working on my router table top here, nice and flat. If I didn't do this, if I just clamped directly onto these parts, or onto the strip, I'd, I'd probably get a wavy uh, glue up. So, I'll glue this. like that. Make sure I'm square. Make sure that doesn't move too much. So this strip is a little a little wider than the plywood is thick. So I've got about an even amount on both sides. The plywood is about three quarters. The strip's about seven eighths. So by uh, you know, moving this back and forth, I can tell that I'm square there. So that looks that looks good. Next, I'll glue the runner to the base. So I'm just going to spread some glue on here. Now I'm going to clamp this to my workbench. Once again, I don't want to be clamping directly on this thin strip because it won't it won't be flat. I'm, I'm not going to put glue on there. I, I think there's plenty of glue on the strip, so or on the runner. So we'll put that there. I left this a little little bit longer than the base. I'm going to get it pretty flush to the edge here. And now I'll turn this over. And I'm clamping to a nice flat surface, so I should get good pressure there. And just, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put this here to act as a call to spread the load out a little better. So I'll let those uh, dry for about a half an hour before I unclamp them and start cutting. The glue has dried on the uh, parts I glued up. Uh, before the glue dried, I scraped off uh, most of the wet glue so uh, this won't be in the way when I plane this uh, flush. On this part, I went fairly sparingly on the glue, so I don't have a lot of squeeze out here, and I cleaned off any squeeze out there. Uh, so I'll probably scrape a little bit of this off. 
just just in the corner. So that looks fine. Very very little squeeze out there. On this part, I need to plane uh, this flush down to the surface. So I'll use my uh, plane here to do that. And I could could use a router flush trimmer for this too, but I think this will be quicker. Feeling here, a little bit more to take off at that end, so. As I get close, I'm gonna back off on the depth of cut. And I'm, I can feel where I'm close here. Okay, so that was good. Do the same thing on this side. Okay, so that is good. I'm just going to sand a little bit just to make sure everything is flat. <clears throat> okay, I'm ready to uh, attack attach these two parts together. I'm going to use uh, six screws, two, two, and two to do that. And uh, I need to make sure that the screws are not in the way of where the wedge goes. Uh, this is a right-handed shooting board, so the wedge is going to go at that end. So I'm going to uh, come in from this end, just three quarters of an inch. Uh, from from this end, you know, the the cleat is going to go underneath here. So I want to I want to move a little further in to miss the cleat. So I'm going to come up about an inch, inch and a quarter from this end, and then in the middle here, I'll come up. Since everything shifted that way a little bit, I'm going to come up just over halfway so about eight and a quarter from there uh, I'm going to come in an inch from each edge here so this is seven and a half I'll be at six and a half here okay so I'll drill through here with the clearance hole for a number eight screw, and then I'll come back from the uh, underside and, and countersink that. And then I'll be able to uh, screw and glue these two uh, parts together. Okay, I've got the uh, number eight clearance hole and countersink bit set up here. I've got my fence set up, so I'm an inch from the edge and I'm just going to drill through here and then I'll uh, I've got a quarter inch spacer here definitely want to make sure these countersinks are deep enough so that uh, the screws don't stick out on the bottom I'll turn this around, do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I'm ready to uh, attach the uh, support. Just came from the drill press. Uh, I've got some fuzzies here, so I'm going to just sand, sand those off.
don't want those uh, messing with the uh, keeping this flat. And I don't know, one side's prettier than the other, it doesn't really matter. Now I want to make sure this doesn't move. So I am going to put some glue on here, although it does, it's not going to take a lot to make sure it doesn't move. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, glue on here. So that should be enough. Now notice I haven't I haven't trimmed any of this stuff flush yet. Everything's kind of overhanging. I'll I'll do that at the table saw in the next step. So that's tight up against there. That's good. And because these screws are not going in very far, these are one inch screws. Yeah, that looks about right. I think the procedure says one and a quarter, so actually I'm not even sure if the procedure talks about screwing this down, but anyway, I'm going to screw it down. Um, but be because these are short screws, because I'm going into plywood, I'm not worried about the wood splitting, I'm, I'm not going to put uh, pilot holes in here. Also these are uh, self-tapping screws, so that should also help make sure this works just fine. Okay, light standing there. All right, next we'll we'll trim everything and uh, to get all these parts parallel, and uh, then we'll start working on the fence attachment. I'm going to trim trim these parts now so this is aligned pretty well these two parts were aligned well when I glued them up so I'm going to use that as my first reference because basically what I want to make happen is I need this edge and then I'm going to make a cut here and I want to trim this edge uh, I need all of those parallel because I'm going to I'm going to be using those as references in the next step. Uh, since this is my best edge right now, I'm going to start with this edge against the fence. So uh, I'm going to line this up. So I'm just just barely taking anything off of the base there. That should work okay. Okay, so uh, that's nice and flush now. On that second cut, I took off you know as little as possible just to get these flush. Now the next thing I need to do is is cut a little bit into this part because I want to make sure this surface is parallel to these other edges. So I'm going to set the depth of cut. So it, it goes halfway into this piece. So this is about a quarter inch thick. I want my cut to go into here, what, about an eighth of an inch. So that's not critical. So I'm just eyeballing that. And then I'm going to adjust the fence so that I'm, I'm half the blade width into this part. So I should be taking off about a sixteenth of an inch of of this uh, hardwood piece here. And I'll be going, you know, slightly into this piece of um, hardboard here. Okay, and last, I, I want to trim up the ends of this. So I'll get my, my sled out. Okay, and, and as before, I was just taking off as little as possible to get those surfaces uh, flush. So next thing I'm going to do is uh, 
make the cut for the wedge and for that I'm going to need the uh, box joint blade. I need a flat top kerf for that. So I'm going to switch the blade out and then we'll make those cuts. Before I make the cuts at the table saw, I need to create the wedge. So per the procedure, uh, one end of the wedge is two and a quarter, the other is one and a half. So I'm going to mark on here, there's uh, one and a half and two and a quarter. So I'm going to draw a line from there to there. And I'll go uh, cut that on the bandsaw. All right, so that's cut. Want to plane this nice and flat. The angle's not that critical, um, but I do need this surface straight. Check it for square, a little bit out there. Okay, so that looks good. The other side's square, although that's just off the jointer. I'm going to uh, take a couple of passes there. Okay, so I've got my uh, surfaces nice and straight because I need the wedge now to make the uh, dado for the wedge. All right, the wedge is going to sit, or the, the front edge of the wedge is three and a half inches from this, from this end. So I'm going to put a mark there. And I need a mark over there because I'll need that in a sec. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, hold this up here to uh, get a sense where the other side of the data is going to be. So it's going to go there. And once again, I really need the mark on this edge because that's, that's what I'm going to see when I'm cutting the dado. So I'm going to start, now I, I know my, I'm pretty confident my sled is square. I'm going to start cutting here and I want to go into uh, this piece about a quarter of an inch. So let's set the depth of cut there to be About a quarter, maybe a touch less. Certainly no more than a quarter, that looks about right. And I'm going to be removing, you know, this material uh, where this cut is perpendicular and this cuts at an angle. So I'm going to start right there.
Okay, so that looks pretty good so far. <clears throat> I've come over about an inch. I can now drop this in. Now remember, at this end, or I'm sorry, at this end, it's going to be an inch and a half. So I still haven't come to my mark over here. But I've, I'm wide enough now where I can check and see how square this is. And it's hitting here first before it hits there. So I need to turn it a little bit that way. So I'm going to put just a little bit of tape here. That's not much, but I think I think it's not going to take much. I just want to take off just a touch there. <clears throat> Okay, so that's that's nice and square. So now I need to finish up my cut. And the the wide end is at this end, the narrow end at this end. So I need to turn this a little bit like that. I need to of course turn it to match my wedge. So I'm going to take my wedge and set it there and put a little tape there just to make sure it doesn't slide. And I'll finish I'll finish up making my cuts here. Before I do that, I should make sure that I'm in the right spot. So I want to be just just short of my line there. So I'll start there and, and work my way back. Okay, so so that fits good. It's I want that to stick out a little bit at that end. So I think I'm ready to uh, fine tune this. Uh, we'll add the cleat and uh, see how it works. Okay, I've got the cleat to cut the length, cut the size. I've got my uh, clearance holes set there. So I'm gonna. Set that there and just clamp it in place for a sec. So I cut it just slightly shorter than the width of the uh, base here. And I want it flush flush with this back edge. Once again, I'm not going to uh, use uh, pilot holes because I'm going into plywood. I'm not going in that far. I've got self-drilling screws or self-tapping screws. And I'm going to just verify those are nice and snug. Sometimes, oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so now we'll check, make sure everything is fitting nicely. So we'll check the fit of the wedge here. And I really want to make sure it's tight at this end. I don't want it moving. And it is just slightly loose at that end. So. I want to take off a little bit of material at this end of the wedge, so we'll 
fine tune that with the plane here. All right, I can still just move that back and forth just a touch there. Okay, that, that fits nicely now. So I'm going to tap that into place. Now it's sticking out about a quarter of an inch here, so I want to cut that. that off. So I'm just going to go to the chop saw to do that. Okay, so that looks good. Tap that into place. So it's sticking out just a little bit. That's maybe a sixteenth. Now, uh, when I'm using this, I'm going to get tear out on the back side here. So I want to uh, use my block plane to put a chamfer back here. And uh, some, sometimes it helps to have a chamfer on the underside. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's see how this works. So I've got my shooting plane here. I need to get the wedge down to the right. All right, right distance. I also need to trim this edge a little bit because the blades slightly sticking into there all right that looks good also I can check and see how things are looking here now that I've got my reference nice and clean I'll run my square up like that that looks great I've sanded over all the edges on the shooting board now so it's comfortable and I don't have to worry about splinters particularly along these uh, edges of the plywood. Uh, you want to be careful I would not sand this edge or anything over here you don't want to have uh, sandpaper grit anywhere your plane blade is going to be touching because it will uh, it'll definitely nick your blade. So all of these edges on the underside and all are all nice and smooth now. Uh, another thing I want to do is I've got some paraffin wax. I'm just going to rub it on this uh, runner here. That'll help guide the plane along there nicely. I mentioned uh, that I had chamfered the underside of the wedge. That may or may not be necessary depending on uh, two things. How, how deep you cut the dado and uh, the distance from the edge of your plane to the edge of the blade. So if when you're using your shooting board, if the edge of the blade goes below below your wedge then everything's going to be fine but if, if the edge of your blade is up above the wedge that means uh, the blade on the shooting plane is not going to totally clean up the edge of this and what will happen if that is the case is you'll get a little strip at the bottom of the wedge that you can never cut um, which is going to make it seem like your shooting board is not working. Um, if that's the case, then you'll need to put that chamfer at the bottom just to clean up that material manually. 
and and as your wedge gets shorter and it may get shorter as you use this you might rock your plane once in a while and take off a little too much material here so if that's the case go back plane a couple of strokes off of here put it back in tune it back up or get it back flush again and, and you'll be good to go so as i said before to use it you know you got to get that muscle memory down where you're just moving the plane back and forth not rocking not coming away from that you always want to be exactly in that same spot in fact some some people actually put a strip over here to keep their plane in the same place and then once you've got that motion down i can bring my material up and get these nice shavings taken off just a little bit at a time to square things up or, or maybe sneak up on the length of something. So your shooting board can be a really valuable tool for, for those types of purposes.